There was a time when having a Polaroid was like having a new iPhone. It was a family favorite, and celebrities loved it too. At its peak in the 1970s, Polaroid controlled almost two-thirds of the instant camera market in the U.S. If you're not taking color pictures with a new Polaroid color pack camera, there's something left out of your life. But the digital revolution offered a new kind of instant image. Polaroid was left exposed and by 2008 had stopped all production. It took something called the Impossible Project to bring it back. But how did this photographic giant fall so low? Andy Warhol was a fan, and no birthday party or special occasion was complete without one. But the man behind Polaroid wasn't thinking about instant film when he started out. This is Edwin Land. He started Polaroid in 1937, developing polarizing lens filters that reduce glare in sunglasses. He went on to patent products for the use in cars and 3D cinema. And during the Second World War, the military became Polaroid's main customer. But it was Land's three-year-old daughter who inspired his groundbreaking invention after they spent the day taking photos on a Rolleiflex camera. At the end of the afternoon, she said, Daddy, why can't I see the picture now? And he said, well, why can't you? Land spent the next four years trying to answer that question. What he created was revolutionary, a self-developing film that could be contained inside the body of a camera. In 1947, he revealed instant film to the world with his own self-portrait. Polaroid had compressed the entire photographic darkroom process into a chemical packet inside of a film negative that would produce an image in less than 60 seconds. The following year, Polaroid launched its first instant camera, the Model 95. The camera debuted at a Jordan Marsh department store in Boston, Massachusetts. The first 56 cameras sold out in a day, even though they cost the equivalent of $1,000 today. It was mostly a, a product for the affluent. Your friend who buys the iPhone the day it comes out, it's that person. <laughs> Over the next five years, Polaroid sold 900,000 units. Through the 1950s and 60s, Polaroid cameras got smaller, better, and more popular. The Color Pack camera, released in 1963, was its first to offer color film, and its automatic exposure made taking photos even simpler. It will give you a perfectly exposed picture on the spot in almost any kind of light, automatically. And two years later came the Swinger, the Swinger. a plastic camera aimed at teens. It took smaller black and white photos, but only cost $20 or about $170 today. Meet the Swinger, the incredible new Polaroid land camera for 1995. It talks to you. Swing it up and take a look. By 1968, Polaroid sales had reached $400 million. But Land still had his eyes on a bigger prize. In this film produced by Polaroid, Land describes his vision was to create a camera that people could always have with them. A camera that would be, oh, like the telephone, something that you use all day long. That concept took shape in the form of the SX-70, a revolution in instant photography, promoted by none other than a young Morgan Freeman. Let's focus right here and press the button. So. Okay. Yeah, that's, what you can do. that's it, hold it. Just a nice smile. Polaroid's SX-70 land camera. To land, the company had fully come of age. Polaroid brought all of its manufacturing for the SX-70 in-house and built new factories to meet demand. According to Bananos, Polaroid spent well over half a billion dollars to develop the camera system. And they started to sell very fast. In fact, they started to sell faster than Polaroid could make. In 1973, the company made 5,000 SX-70s per day. They sold for around $180, almost $1,200 today. Two years later, Polaroid sales hit $813 million double what they were only eight years earlier. Land had this vision for essentially an iPhone before digital technology. And the idea was for that to be carried by the average user in their coat pocket. And whenever they wanted to, they could pop it up, take a picture without having to adjust any dials, any aperture, any shutter speed. The camera would decide all of this for you. This is Kyle. He's one of the founders of Brooklyn Film Camera, a store that sells and refurbishes vintage cameras. He used to work for the Impossible Project, the company that would eventually save Polaroid. But that comes later. Looking around the store, the SX-70 is, well, everywhere. It's Polaroid enthusiasts' favorite camera. People could not believe this. You could take this camera out, 
Take a quick picture, something almost like Instagram, actually, for the analog age. In the 1970s, the Polaroid camera cemented itself in popular culture. Andy Warhol was an avid Polaroid shooter and used a whole range of cameras. He used a camera called the Big Shot that was built just for portraits, and a lot of the Warhol silkscreen paintings are based on photographs he made with that camera. By 1978, Polaroid hit $1.38 billion in revenue, selling 9.4 million cameras. As Polaroid's fortunes peaked in the late 70s, Land gambled on doing, for moving images, what he had done for stills. The gamble was Polavision, an 8mm movie system that could produce instant moving pictures. Polavision, Polaroid's instant movies. Seconds after you shoot, you got it. But many were skeptical. It was expensive. The film required a ton of light to be exposed properly. And you had to have one of these boxes close by to see your film. Polaroid only sold 60,000 units before it was discontinued in 1979, and the company was forced to write off $89 million. In 1980, after 43 years in charge, Edwin Land stepped down as president and chairman. Two years later, he left the company entirely. Meanwhile, Kodak had released its own instant camera at a similar price point. Grab onto the handle at a low, low price. The products were so similar that Polaroid brought a lawsuit against Kodak for patent infringement, claiming lost revenues of $12 billion. The problem for the Kodak instant camera is that it works just like Polaroid's instant camera. Polaroid's iconic instant camera remained popular, but without a diversity of products, the company was vulnerable. From 1978 to 1982, its share of the U.S. photo market fell by almost 10%. Kodak was eventually found guilty of infringement and forced to pull all instant products from the market and pay Polaroid $909 million. But that wouldn't be enough to save Polaroid. 35 millimeter film cameras were cheaper and easier to use and produced higher quality photos. The company started to cut costs by outsourcing production and trimming its workforce. By 1991, it only had a quarter of the employees it did in 1978. Companies like Canon and Nikon were emerging leaders in the new digital camera market. Consumers no longer saw the need for an instant camera with expensive film. And the whole way Polaroid had worked was that the camera was sold more or less at cost and the film carried a huge profit margin, 60% on a pack of film. And without film, the whole house of cards came down. Through the 90s, Polaroid relied on products like the Captiva, where the developing photo was kept inside the body of a camera. Where's the picture? There's no picture. Did you see the picture come out? How can that be a Polaroid camera if there's no picture? It doesn't look like a Polaroid camera. It's not a Polaroid camera. The camera didn't hit. And in 1995, Polaroid took a loss of $140 million. Someone inside took the attitude that if we can just get our costs down per picture, we'll be okay to compete against digital. And the truth is, they couldn't be okay because the cost of a digital picture, once you've bought the camera, is zero. In 2001, Polaroid declared bankruptcy. And over the next seven years, the company would change owners three times. And in 2008, Polaroid announced that it would stop all production of instant cameras and film. It was the end of an era, or so it seemed. At the closing ceremony for its last remaining factory in the Netherlands in 2008, Polaroid wholesaler Florian Caps had other ideas. I had all these, these customers and, you know, the business became bigger and bigger and I started to sell more and more films and then Polaroid called in 2008 and said, hey, sorry dude, but, you know, we closed the last factory. Caps decided to keep operating the instant film plant as part of a new venture to keep Polaroid's instant film alive. They called it the Impossible Project. Over the next several years, the Impossible Project worked with former Polaroid staff to improve film quality and became the only supplier of film for the SX-70 and 600 cameras. Everything, so the developer, the, the fixation, the stop of development, the protection from light, all has to be in this little system uh, called a Polaroid picture. So it's absolutely rocket science. In 2017, the Impossible Project bought what was left of Polaroid, and the company rebranded to Polaroid Originals. The same year, the company launched the One Step 2, an homage to the original One Step camera released in 1977. Today, Polaroid continues to produce iconic cameras and instant film for a generation wanting an analog experience in a digital world. I actually think digital is kind of the fad, which I know seems crazy. 
But I mean, digital technology has really only been with us for around you know, 30 some years in a, in a mainstream way. But it never quite feels as good as doing the analog version, right? You know, it feels really good to use a camera that's mechanical and to, to learn that camera and appreciate it and, and understand it in a way that is incredibly holistic. Instant photography is cool again. The Fujifilm Instax camera is one of the highest selling cameras in the world. But Polaroid is finally embracing digital too. Its product line includes devices like iPhone scanners and 3D printers. For Kyle and many others though, the magic of the instant Polaroid is still there. I mean, being able to see this image develop from nothing and slowly come in is, is uh, to this day, still beautiful to me.